So today we're going to talk about the juicy topic of the self-fulfilling prophecy of failure. Now, this is something that every guy has experienced in some form or another where they have created a limited belief or a belief around something. And then when they've gone to experience something where that belief is attached to, they've either got positive or negative experiences from it. And then that has furthermore shaped their limiting beliefs. And specifically in dating, this usually materializes in a sense that you tend to get guys who they don't believe they're good enough. They believe that maybe they're a failure. They believe that they are unlovable and that maybe even they don't deserve to be in a relationship. And kind of what I spoke about in my I Me Self You video that I put out about a week ago. Um, with that, usually a guy's past experience is what shapes his limiting belief. But there are also experiences where a guy has maybe witnessed other people going through an experience or they've been influenced in a certain way, whether it be through media or through watching movies and TV shows. And that has also shaped their beliefs as well. Well, I'm here, if anything, just to make you aware of how this self-fulfilling prophecy works and hopefully just give you an incentive to try and break out of it or get you to even consider that whatever limiting beliefs that you have, the only person who believes them is you. No one is telling you otherwise, or hopefully no one's telling you otherwise, otherwise you certainly need to cut them out of your lives. But it is just down to you who is getting into your own way and saying, no, you can't do this, or no, you don't deserve that. I believe every guy deserves the ability to have a relationship, to have a girlfriend, to want a family, have kids, whatever your decision is. Hell, even if you want to just be going out and having fun. But if you're finding that your limiting beliefs are telling you that you're not sociable, it's not possible to get better with women, you have to stay as you are, or again, you don't deserve this or that, then I want you to question these limiting beliefs. And I think the best way to do it is to just become aware of it. But at the end of this video, I'm actually gonna give you some tangible advice by sharing with you things that I did to work on myself and help me to reshape the limiting beliefs that I have. But most importantly, how you're gonna work or overcome these is by just having that awareness of the limiting beliefs and just genuinely trying to question them. So I think actually what I'm gonna do first of all is we're gonna just have a look at how the cycle works. What is the cycle of the self-fulfilling prophecy of failure? So I've just opened up uh, my Photoshop and, and let, let's actually have a look at the cycle. What is the, the actual process uh, or thought process that guys go through that solidifies this limiting belief? So first of all, I guess a guy will have the belief itself. So let, let's start off with that. You've, uh, you believe uh, you want a girlfriend, but you believe you're not good enough. It's not possible to approach women or cold approach women to give them a compliment, tell them that you, uh, that you like them and just start a conversation with them. And you say that to yourself over and over again, whether then you've gone out with a friend, maybe you've even gone out on your own. Cause this is, in fact, I'd probably say for most guys that I've met, their limiting beliefs usually happen when they've probably watched a couple of YouTube videos of dating coaches and then they've gone out on their own, not with a friend, but they've gone out on their own, which is brilliant, but they've gone out already with a mindset that is telling them that this isn't going to work, this isn't going to go well, or you're going to fail, this is going to be embarrassing for you. So there's a lot of negative language that's attached to that. And I kind of spoke about that in my I, Me, Self, You video that I put out that really just talks about the language 
that we use when we talk about our own limiting beliefs and why it's a trap. The more you keep using negative language, the more you're just going to negatively reinforce it. Which is really then uh, where like the second uh, part of this would come in, where you've you've got the thought, uh, you've gone out maybe to go and cold approach women, and you've managed to really muster up the courage, and you've gone to do it. So I would say then you've gone and taken action. Okay, so we've gone and taken action. If I wonder if I'm sure there's a like an arrow, I'm sure I can do like an arrow here. Uh, let's see. Arrowhead. There we go. Oh, no, that's the, that's totally the wrong way. So we want to drag it backwards. Okay. There we go. So we've got the belief, uh, that things aren't going to go well, and then we've taken action. Um, and then you've had a really bad experience. Now you, uh, this might've been like your first time to go and cold approach, or maybe even like your first day going out to do it and you've decided right i'm going to start even really simple i'm going to just go over ask for directions or i'm going to give a compliment but because you're so nervous and you're so anxious you kind of mumble it as you're stopping people or you're kind of shaking and you know but that your delivery most importantly wasn't great so the girls maybe don't hear you Maybe they ignore you. Maybe they had headphones on and, you know, you very weakly went to stop them and they didn't even give you the slightest time of day. And you've taken that to heart. And that has told you, oh, I knew it. I knew it. I, I didn't, I don't deserve this. I'm not good. I'm never going to be good. Um, I can't imagine me ever getting any better at this. This is going to be the level that I'm going to stay at for the rest of my life you know, yada, 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 all of that. So really then what the uh, the next phase would be, in fact, I'm going to probably even do an arrow there now because that's going to be easier. Um, the next phase then really would be the validation. The validation of the belief. You've had the experience, it didn't go well. And so that said to you, you're a failure. You're never going to change. What was the point in doing this? You're only embarrassing yourself. You know, you're almost like bullying yourself, really. It's just like as if you you want it to go really, really badly. You're kind of self-sabotaging your experience, which then ultimately feeds back. I think it was this way, wasn't it? Yeah. Which feeds back into the belief. So then we are kind of come back to square one again. You've, you've had a belief, you've taken action, you've experienced this or had this negative experience. And that has just validated that your belief was correct, that you are incapable of getting results. And that then reinforces that belief. So maybe then uh, I'm going to just like write here and I'm going to just do it in a bit smaller writing at 30. So reinforces. That maybe we'll do that bigger. Otherwise you'd be like, there we go. That's better. So it then reinforces the belief. Now I wonder then, can I can I put anything there and there on those arrows? So uh with the belief to taking action, uh so I suppose with that we would be challenging the belief would be probably what I would uh, say with that. And then down below here, I'd say the action, um, uh, you know what, the experience. The experience is what's going to give you the validation. So there we go. So I mean, maybe that actually makes more sense to guys now that you've got, what are the different phases of the cycle here? that guys go through. So you've got the belief itself that you, um, uh, this negative belief, you try to challenge it. And then when you take the action, it goes horribly wrong. Um, you get a really bad result. And that gives you a terrible experience of trying to challenge this belief, which just solidifies that your belief was right. 
that it's not possible to change. And of course, that reinforces that belief, which is only going to cycle this round and around until you get to that point that you don't see any further reason to challenge that belief or take action. And so really this cycle will only go around so many times until you're like, right, enough's enough. I'm not going to change. I'm not going to get the results that I want. So what's the point? But I'm also here to tell you that the self-fulfilling prophecy goes two ways. It's not just with the negative experiences that you can have. It can also work with the positive as well. And this is why whenever you are challenging your beliefs, you really do need to be very optimistic and you need to be your own best friend. You need to be okay that wherever you're at right now, maybe isn't great, but with time and effort and patience and dedication to wanting to get better, then you will break out of this cycle and it will turn into a much more positive one. And even just going through it again, you've got now this belief that, you know what, you can get a girlfriend, you can get better at socializing with people, you can have a conversation with a complete stranger and you can give people or women compliments and you are possible or it is possible to get phone numbers for women, you are capable of doing it. Then your, whatever your adverse negative belief is but you are being optimistic this time, you challenge it and after a couple of times suddenly you speak to someone and she loves that approach. She loves that you've given her a compliment. She even loves that conversation that you had with her that she gives you her phone number. Now, suddenly this new positive experience that you've had can change or reinforce this belief in a whole new way. So your validation for this belief can actually change. And in a way, maybe in parallel to this, besides your negative belief, you've also got a positive belief. And that positive belief is what's going to start overwriting that negative one. And then you're going to get that reinforcement when you end up doing it again. Now, you also have to understand that even the best guys who go out there in cold approach and specifically even dating coaches, for example, every approach that they do, they're not always getting amazing results. You know, they aren't going to be every girl's cup of tea. And in fact, they get rejections. They get turned down by women or women are in relationships or they're married and stuff and they don't want to ruin a good thing that they've got. And so the guys then when they walk away or the coaches, they're not devastated. They're not then looking or having this belief of, oh, well, I'm a failure. Oh, well, no woman wants me now. No, they in accept what the situation is and their limiting beliefs tell them that, you know what, they are good enough, that they are great, they deserve happiness, that the hard work that they've put in through all the experience they've accumulated over time, that they are able to carry on getting good results and that being rejected or just getting told no. I mean, I even hate the, the, the phrase rejection. You're not really getting rejected. Um, but just being told no it doesn't affect them. They're desensitized to it. So that that's kind of at least the, the, the cycle there. And I hope, at, you know, at the very least that that does make sense. I want to now share with you what I did to work on my um, beliefs. What did I do and experience to overcome any of the self-fulfilling prophecies that I had? Well, I mean, I think really for starters, it was just important to recognize, uh, again, what the belief was and how I was behaving within that belief. Now, when I had my Darren Brown experience, when I was on this placebo, this whole process, this cycle became very apparent to me. And this is going back to 2012, that this whole cycle was very apparent to me when I was, when I noticed um, or realized that like what kind of language I was using before I was on the placebo, as opposed to during being on that placebo. 
that I was certainly a lot more optimistic with my thinking. I certainly became more of my own best friend. And I think I was just a lot more sensible with my understanding of how my personal growth worked. That I came to this realization that, you know what? Everyone, when they start something new, is going to be crap at it. They aren't going to be very good. Your anxiety is most certainly going to be higher than normal. You're not going to understand the ins and outs of it. So, of course, your confidence isn't going to be there. But the more that you learn and the more that you can experience, then that is going to shape your new beliefs. Now, even with experiences, you're obviously going to have the highs and lows and stuff. Like when I started my business, I was incredibly nervous. I didn't know if it was going to work or not. Trust me when I say that all of the people around me in my life, they didn't believe it was going to work out. So when you've got your own optimism in yourself, your own belief that "Ah, this is going to succeed, I'm going to keep trying, I'm going to keep going, it's going to grow. And then you've got people around you saying like, no, you starting a business isn't good enough. Maybe you should just sort of like quit. Maybe you should get yourself uh, employed. It's only a real job if you're employed by someone else. And, you know, and it was a very hard, steep slope to climb. And I had moments where things were quiet, where I had no clients. And, you know, and those were the hardest moments. And most certainly I even had moments over the couple of years where I did quit. But then I sort of slept overnight. I got up the next day and I was like, stop moaning, get on with it things happen, you need to just carry on trying and things will work out. And they did. And then suddenly I got clients and things worked out for the better. And even in dating, once upon a time, I didn't believe that it would be possible for me to ever get a girlfriend. I mean, hell, I was 21 years old and I'd never even kissed a girl. And I even believed at that point that it wasn't possible that I was going to just stay being a virgin and and never kiss someone and and so on. And then after just a couple of months of being introduced to pick up and being part of the dating communities and facing a lot of my fears and putting myself out there and also just challenging a lot of those beliefs that I had, it turned around. And as soon as I got my first kiss, suddenly I was like, I think it's possible for me to be able to get that again. And then I did. And I did it again and again and so on. And same with dates. I didn't believe I'd be capable of having dates. And then I went on hundreds over the last few years. Or I say over the last few years, over like the last decade or so. So you have to really understand that if you're at the beginning of your journey, that it is okay that things will go horribly wrong and that you have to trust the process. And to quote... One of my old uh, coaches and friends, Johnny Berber, uh, or he goes by Johnny O'Hanlon now, but he used to say, enjoy the process. And when you can learn to just have fun with meeting people, that is where then you're going to find things are going to turn around for you and you will develop that confidence and you'll develop uh, a new cycle of thinking because you're going to get positive reference experiences But you have to be very empathetic for yourself and understand that you've got to take the good with the bad. But believing in just the bad, that is where the trap is going to be. So what would I recommend to other guys to do? Well, essentially, really everything that I've uh, shared there. Be a lot more optimistic and be open to the idea that where you're at now maybe isn't great, but with a lot of effort and practice and determination, you can get the results that you want. But you have to try and be okay to embrace failure. Like failure happens to everyone. Like no one's like safe from it. Um, Everyone gets affected by it. But what does separate people is how that failure affects them. So it's easier said than done. 
But I did find as well that just having a good support system in place really made all the difference. Like for me, I had a really good social circle of friends in the dating community who were going through all the same things as me. So it made it very easy to be able to communicate and articulate how I was feeling about stuff. And also witnessing them when we were going out and approaching, witnessing them also experiencing rejections or no's and stuff and how they handled it actually made me see things from like a third person perspective and go, you know what, actually that wasn't that bad. So you have to bear in mind that what you're experiencing, as opposed to if you were to have like this out of body experience and witness yourself approaching, you too would also go, actually, you know what? That really isn't that bad. Look at, he's walking away safely. He's fine. Okay, I would have done this or that differently. And so that's where, if anything, you do start reshaping your thought process on your beliefs and also be okay to challenge them, like question them, play devil's advocate and just be like, do I really believe that like I'm not capable of having a conversation with people? What makes me believe that? you know, have I tested and challenged that, you know, and really, if you can just do all of those things that I've suggested, you will find that after a bit of time, you will certainly start getting results. But what can really help you is by going to a coach or an expert who can actually just get you on track sooner than later. They can kind of nudge you, uh, change the errors of your ways if you are noticing that you are being really negative about something. Being around a coach, they're going to give you that optimism. They're going to give you that support and nurturing that you need. So you can go into these very scary situations, challenge your beliefs in a safer environment or more supportive environment that should hopefully turn this negative belief cycle into a much more positive one. So if you are interested in coaching, um, do have a look at my website. I actually offer a week-long training uh, to help you to overcome your anxiety. Uh, If you've got maybe any uh, social anxiety traumas, I also offer my eye movement therapy within that. Or if you really want to get an out-of-body experience and notice you know, specifically maybe where you're going wrong with your approaches, then do have a look at my filming and feedback sessions where exactly what I've got on my YouTube channel of Bill and his journey with approaching and then me giving him feedback afterwards. You know, you can really learn a lot when you see what your body language, your linguistics, or even how you communicate in R uh, is like to people as well. So I think I'll end it there. Uh, My name is Dan, that dating anxiety guy. I really hope that this content helps you out. Um, If you can, please like the video. Uh, subscribe to the channel as well. And if you want to see more videos like this or maybe more specific video ideas, then do let me know in the comments below what sort of things you would love for me to make. But other than that, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this video and also maybe other videos too.